Folks, my name is George Kubik, and welcome to my leather shop here in Tucson, Arizona, a little studio I like to call GC Custom Leather Company. I'd like to take this opportunity, first of all, and thank you for buying my videotape, How to Make Custom Quality Knife Leather, and it's with my sincerest intentions that I plan on helping you not only build a better quality knife sheath, but one that will complement the knife maker's craftsmanship, as well as making one that's a complete knife using system using the principles of fit, function, and appearance. Now, whether you're a leather worker looking for some new and challenging projects or a knife maker looking to learn or improve your leather sheath making abilities so that you can increase the quantity of your knife sales or you're an outdoorsman, a serious knife user or somebody who just likes working with their hands, well then this tape is ideal for you because I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step processes that I use for building what I like to call custom quality knife leather. We're going to be looking at every aspect of this particular craft from pattern making, leather selection, use of tools, edging, burnishing techniques, hand molding, hand sewing, decorative touches, final finishing techniques. There's going to be absolutely nothing that I'm going to leave out of this videotape. Alright, the two projects that we're going to be building today on this video are two of the more popular style of knife sheaths and scabbards. Um, the first one will be the ever popular deep well wet molded pouch sheath. This one is designed to fit one specific fixed bladed knife. It's great for utilities, hunters, and straight back knives. We're going to show you how to incorporate the use of welts and the back hanger on these particular style of sheaths. The second project we're going to be building today is the fixed bladed scabbard style sheath. This one's um, also very popular nowadays. It uses the wraparound strap. We're going to be doing some decorative touches, basket weave, and a Spanish coin cover for the, the cap. We're also going to be looking at how to build a sharpening steel pouch for the front of uh, scabbard style sheaths and everything else that you'll need to know to build these yourself. Before we actually get started building these knife sheets, we have to have a few uh, tools and material that will make life a little bit easier for us. Uh, the very first thing that we definitely want to make sure that we have of top quality, and that is the leather. Vegetable tanned, 9, 10 ounce, 10, 11 ounce uh, is excellent for knife sheaths and scabbards. The most important thing is that it's firm and clean. Uh, we do want a tight piece of cowhide. And again, the most important part is that it's vegetable tanned, not chrome tanned, uh, as those have an excessive amount of tannic acid, which will affect the knife blade. Um, it's very important to look at the back of the leather that you purchase, either in double shoulders or in bends. Um, if you have a piece of leather that looks like this, you definitely want to run away from it. Um, the nap, the flesh side of the leather is fuzzy, spongy, and we don't want to use this whatsoever. What we do want is the firm, clean hide. That's very important. Don't skimp when it comes to buying your leather. Some other tools that we'll need, obviously, for pattern making will be some good quality bond paper, pencil wing dividers, compass, a Sharpie pen, a ballpoint pen, and a ruler of some type. I like using these type of rulers, uh, word processing scales. They, um, you can see through them, and they have already certain measurements already designed into the ruler. Several hammers are also real handy for building knife sheaths. The first one is a French shoemaker's hammer. And basically what this is, is it has a convex head. 
Um, you don't have to run out and buy one. You can take any old tack hammer and just put it under your grinder and convex the head slightly. The reason for that is when you do strike the leather that it doesn't imprint the head onto your leather. A good quality rawhide hammer is also good when you use tools as it doesn't damage the metal. These can be purchased at uh, Tandy Leather or any other leather supply houses, leather factory. When you cut leather, any type of knife that you prefer works. The professional style is this round head knife. It isn't really necessary to purchase. It does come in handy for certain uh, aspects. However, an X-Acto knife, a pocket knife, or a utility knife out of your toolbox uh, works just as good for cutting your leather. A strap cutter for cutting straps for your scabbard style sheets and your wraparound straps are handy. You might want to get you some bulldog clamps at the uh, office supply store. Take you a one ounce piece of garment leather material and cover the jaws. These are excellent for holding your various uh, stages of uh, sheaths and while they're drying and gluing them together. A little square is handy for cutting square uh, edges. Um, an awl is also very handy. Horsehide brushes for polishing and uh, brushing your leather is great. Some wing dividers come in real handy. A gouge is also necessary for when you're cutting the grooves in, in uh, folded leather. These tools here are items that you'll need to pick up at the leather supply shop because this is the only where, the place that you can get them. And this one here is a stitch marker. It gives you uh, five, six, seven stitches per inch. Six and seven are a good all-around uh, pair to have. These are groovers. They come in straight and edge groovers. They'll make a little recess in the edge of your leather and you'll see how all of this stuff works when we get started with the building process. Uh, a name stamp, if you're a knife maker, you usually stamp your knives. Uh, leather workers, you should just be as proud of your uh, items as, uh, as everybody else and should mark them, let people know that you made them. A carving knife that I've altered is also handy for cutting in grooves. You'll see how that works for hand sewing leather. A chiseled screwdriver. Take your screwdriver, chisel the very tip, and then polish it, and that's great for cutting corners. I'll show you how that works. There are certain applications in uh, sheath building that you'll require uh, to sky the leather, and uh, this skyf is uh, another item that you can purchase at the supply house. A piece of glass, uh, auto safety glass is great, or a piece of marble, or anything that's smooth is uh, what you'll need, and you'll see how all of these things work. A cutting board, these are the kitchen type, they're poly, it's a plastic uh, type board. When you use your knives on them, they don't uh, dull as quickly as, is, as if you were uh, cutting into wood. For edging techniques, also two edging tools. The number one and the number two are the most popular and you probably won't need any of the others. Burnishing waxes, take some beeswax, melt it with your favorite shoe polish, brown or black. Um, be real careful though when you make these because the, the melting point, the flash point are quite low. Um, these are excellent. Edge paints, these are on the market. Excellent for dyeing your edges. For sewing your leather, you'll need some sewing thread. And the best thread that I have found, I've been using it now for 10 years, is a 50 pound test braided micron fishing line. Uh, this is probably some of the finest sewing thread that you can find. Um, it dyes well, it's strong, it doesn't rot, it doesn't fray. Um, 
this is just the best that there is. Beeswax, harness egg eye needles, double lot, single lot, one and two are handy to have. When you first start sewing leather, you'll have a tendency to get raw. Um, you'll raw your skin on the insides or outsides of your fingers here. So just take a little bit, some leather scrap, build you some leather covers, and that'll help you when you sew leather. Some needle nose pliers, take a piece of tubing, wrap it around the end, it'll help you manipulate them so that you don't have to open them. That's real handy. Cements, barges type cement is very, very good for leather. It's a contact cement basically is what it boils down to. Barges, Tandy, and even just standard contact cements on the market work great. Whenever you glue two pieces of leather together, they should be scratched or the surf surfaces should be roughed up. A leather scratcher here that you can buy on the market or a standard Dremel type tool with a burr head works real good because you can get that pencil control uh, as far as where you're burnishing. Some finishing products, olive oil is a great finishing product that I use versus neat foot, Neat's foot oil. Snow seal works great. Any type of a paste wax that you may have is excellent. Reese's Texas Leather Polish is a good temporary final finish. Liquid glycerin saddle soap is very handy to have and it also m helps you make your rub rags. And these are, these are items that will help you um, smooth out the edges of your leather. And what you do is you take canvas or denim type material and you soak it in, in the uh, liquid glycerin soap for uh, about a day and then take it out and let it dry and then for uh, polishing the edges. For dyeing leather, Thieving's oil dye is the only thing that I could recommend is because it's what I use and I, I know the product works very well. Um, some other items, this here is nothing more than a spray bottle. Water, it's an old hairspray bottle. All applications of leather work require the leather to be damped, damp or moist and this gives such a fine mist that it allows you to control the amount of water you put into leather. These items over here are just nice to have. They're not really necessary. This would be an old dishwasher motor or something to that effect, the third horse, half horse, with a drill chuck on it. It's great for making uh, edge burnishing wheels, for sanding drum wheels, for doing the edges. A Dremel drill press is what I use for drilling out the holes for the hand sewing. Or a free standing Dremel also is great for drum sanding and uh, drilling and any other aspects that you have in this, in this craft. Okay, these are the tools and materials that you'll need. And now I think it's time to get started. Let's build those knife sheets. Okay, the foundation of every knife sheath is in the pattern. Uh, remember what I said earlier was fit, function, and appearance? Uh, this is where it all begins, right here on paper. All right, gather your pattern making supplies and your knife, and as always, be real careful when you're handling these knives. And uh, let's start with the deep welded pounce sheet. First thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and draw myself a reference line pretty well center of the paper. Take your knife and you center it onto this line. The back tang and the very tip of the blade should be in line. Now very carefully roll it to your left and just let it sit there just like that. Take your pen and just go ahead and do a tracing keeping your pen perpendicular to the knife. You get a general idea of the outline of your knife. Working with leather and knife sheaths, there is no 
science to this as each piece of leather is a little bit different there will always be a little bit of handwork for every sheet that you do um, so now that we have that we can go ahead and actually start the uh, framework of the sheath and with that what you'll want to do is the welt which protects the edge of the knife is three-eighths of an inch and you'll be using a 10 ounce leather so what I do is uh, you can take your your compass measure it out to three-eighths of an inch and use that um, right along the edge of the knife I have learned to uh, just use this type of a ruler and I'll show you how I do it take um, the very tip of your knife here lay the ruler this just so happens this edge right here is exactly three-eighths of an inch and then I just draw myself a reference line there and I move it around the edge of the blade of the knife to get an idea of what I'm doing I'm just sort of giving myself general and then at the guard here I move it out three-eighths of an inch and then at that edge there three-eighths of an inch and as you can see that's starting to develop into some type of a shape now from the guard even with your reference line you'll want to draw a line straight up this portion of the handle and this will all come into into play as, as it uh, as it develops here it may be sometimes difficult to, to understand immediately but as we continue it'll all come into play as you can see here the transition of the knife edge is very easy to see now what you want to do is just get a general idea of where you want the top of the knife and the sheath and in uh, rule of thumb is that an inch to an inch and a half is probably not a bad uh, bad idea so draw yourself a line across the top now what I do is I take my sharpie pen and I just put it on the outside edge line and then a nice smooth transition there it's all freehand with your guidelines giving you the basis bring that mark to your initial reference line at the very tip of your knife to the bottom draw a straight line at this point right here which is the top of where your sheath you'll want a nice transition around the top so what I'll do is I'll take a um, something to this effect here draw you a nice uh, smooth flowing line okay now that is the basic shape of the sheath now what you want to do is you want to bring this line down here and then straight across here don't worry about anything else this line also straight across don't worry about anything else that believe it or not is your knife sheath what you do now is you take it you'll cut it out Our scissors too much about having excess paper here because you cut it off later just remember the paper is cheaper than leather now take your paper and just sort of fold it into the shape of the knife sheath you don't want a real strong crease here just a general fold take your knife slip it into your paper pattern to where your markings are up front see if that's how high you want the handle remember that uh, when it's on your belt an inch to an inch and a half is all you need to grab it the rest you want uh, in the sheath protected 
And that uh, is satisfactory so far. So now what we'll do is just bend that top part down. Take your pin, trace the top. And then give yourself about an inch to the outside of the, uh, the pattern. And then cut that off. And that there is the pattern for your knife. The next step is to take this particular pattern and rubber cement onto a piece of cardboard and transfer it to this cardboard because when you transfer it to leather you need something stiff to actually uh, be able to draw the pattern onto the leather. Once you have that then you take your X-Acto knife or any other knife and you cut it out. Before you do that though you can go ahead and draw in the weld now is a good time with the, the background or with the uh, solid backing. And the way you do that is this here is the weld for the blade. This will be sole leather or 10, 11 ounce leather. And what that does is it prevents the knife blade from cutting through to the stitches that will be there. For a deep weld pouch sheath, you'll want some compression to hold the knife into the sheath. And what you can do is, to give yourself a reference line, is draw from your guard here of your knife straight up to your pattern. This here being 3 eighths of an inch. To draw in your welt, it is again a free hand operation, and you start from the top of your line there a nice smooth flowing roll about an eighth of an inch past your welt line there and what that'll do is as the knife comes out it'll compress against this piece of leather here around the guard there you little stop and what happens is when the knife is inserted into the sheath this little stop right here this little u-turn catches this guard and doesn't allow it to progress any further. Now take your marker and ride along the edge blade to this first initial point and all of this is your welt. This is your knife sheath. Cut it out and you have your pattern. That's for your first one. Your second one is the scabbard sheath. We don't need paper for that one. You can do it directly on to your cardboard. And the way you do that is you get your edge right along the two guards here, put it down, hold the blade, draw the shape of your blade. Once you have that, then again take your compass or your ruler and mark out your 3 8 inch welt. Put it right along the edge of the knife and then give yourself a general guide for shape. Now you can do this exact and it'll be the exact shape of the sheath or you can do it the way I'm doing it which is a little more freehand. And again, this is the shape of the front piece of your scabbard. And what I do is I'll trace. And again, nice smooth transition into this point. Now when you get to the point, you can either round it like this, or you can take it to the point. It's your choice there, it's the artistic part of this game. Once you have that all drawn out, then you measure across here, and uh, it's two and a quarter inches. So what you'll want for the back piece, you'll want two and a half inch strap. And so just remember, 
you'll want to cut a two and a half inch strap for the back piece. And that's all there is. Cut that out for the scabbard. That is pattern making, essentially. As we put the knife to the leather, uh, you'll see how this all comes together. All right, let's go ahead and take that pattern now and transfer it to the leather and finish this knife sheath. I did want to show you real quick, though, that you can alter the top of the pattern and give it a, a, a different appearance. In this one here, we have a nice smooth top to the pattern, and that gives it that appearance. Or you could just sort of give it a ledge like this, and that'll give it um, just a different shape. It's all standard. It's all the same, but it just is a little bit different. Um, feel free to experiment and do whatever you like on these. All right, go ahead and take that first cardboard pattern that you, that you had, transfer it to your quality piece of leather, find you a nice section of the hide. What you want to do is you want to look at the back. You'll want to take your hand, rub across it, make sure that there's no range, scars, or marks from the cow and uh, that it's a good solid piece through and through, that there's no spongy parts. Take your pattern in the section that you found that works for you. And you can take a ballpoint pen, an awl, a pencil, and uh, just transfer the pattern to the letter. Leather. And that's nothing more than just following these lines. Some people don't like using the pen, but actually you, you, you cut them away. It's not too bad. Take your pattern. The next step is to block out your pattern so that go a little bit outside the edge of the pattern so that you don't have to worry about uh, and don't worry about saving an extra quarter inch of leather. If you're going to skimp that much, then, uh, then you're probably going to have a few problems. So take your leather and very carefully with the knife straight up and down at a 90 degree angle, slightly score that ink line. And basically what you want to do is you want to split that ink line. And if you miss it by a 64th of an inch, not a real big deal. Anything more than that, you'll definitely want to transfer it to another piece of leather. Okay, once you have that cut out, and again, it's very important, if you, if you angle that knife like this, you're not going to get that clean, sharp 90 degree edge. And just continue with your knife here and transfer the pattern with the leather the knife. And remember the first time, just score that line slightly. You don't have to have a whole lot of pressure. Most important thing is just keeping that knife straight up and down. And the second time you cut it, it should be a little bit deeper. You might even be able to get through in the second cut. One more. And a good quality piece of leather also is firm. You'll feel that firmness all the way through the cut. All right. Now we have that, and you'll want to take and edge the top now. And the way we do that is you take your number one edger, your number two edger. Uh, this works, um, either one is fine, 45 degree angle. Take that excess piece of uh, edge off. Now one thing that you may want to remember too is on these cutting boards after a while they'll get little cut lines and it could transfer to the face of your, uh, your leather. So either use a piece of cardboard, a piece of uh, glass or marble, that'll protect the, the leather. Okay, once you have that top part edged, we don't worry about this yet. Uh, we'll go ahead and take this and dump it in some water and get it nice and moist. Some warm water works, not hot, not real cold. A drop or two of ivory soap helps to, to uh, soften. And this is nothing more than water. Submerge the leather. And then go ahead and bring it back to your bench.
Okay. With the uh, leather nice and moist, you can take uh, a, a burnishing tool similar to this. This is nothing more than a piece of plastic with a rat tail groove in it. Um, a piece of wood, take a rat tail file, cut you a couple different size grooves in it, and then just take it and just run it along the edge like this while it's still wet. What that does is it forces the fibers of the leather to lie real smooth. That protects the edges of the leather. When it's all completed, it won't uh, allow moisture to seep in along your edges. This is uh, one thing that separates professional sheaths from, from the hobbyists, is the time that it takes to do this. This is also where you can take that rub rag that's uh, glycerin soaked and just rub it along the edge. And that is real soft, smooth, and makes a real nice edge. Okay, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put the welt onto this pattern. And the easiest way to do it is go ahead and take your pattern and just cut out your welt. And uh, go to the very tip of your knife, because that's the edge of your welt. Bring it down. And then this inside line here of your welt is what you want to cut out. Okay, now that you have your welt, you'll want to go ahead and take, uh, take it back to the leather. Now this is good, heavy, 10, 11 ounce leather. You want the final product to be what I call holster grade tough, and that is thick. You want it, you want it solid, just like a holster is, and uh, nothing flimsy on the belt. Again, transfer this to your leather. And the most important part is this inside piece here. The back piece here is not really important because that'll be trimmed to fit later. Again, cut out your welt. Okay, now remember, on the final product, it's very important that the inside of the sheath looks just as clean and professional as the outside. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to take this edge here, and you'll want to go ahead and moisten it, and then burnish it, same as you did the top here. And that is nothing more than uh, um, a professional touch. Go ahead and take the pattern welt that you had just made, transfer that to your sheath, right along the edge there, take an awl, this is not a pen, this is an, this is an awl, something sharp, and just transfer the outside edge of the, the welt pattern to the leather. That will give you a little idea of It'll give you a little idea of where your welt is. And all of this has come from the initial pattern that you've made. Once you have that, give yourself a general idea for your, your welt. And this here you can use a pen because all of this is going to be cut off later. This is your welt piece. Now, take those uh, scratchers that I talked about earlier. rough up the leather. What that does is it'll help give that contact cement something to contact to. And on the inside of your sheet, and now it's really important that you remember damp leather will easily transfer uh, um, to the cutting board, so you want to be real careful about that. 
take your your piece here slip it on the inside now this is the flesh side this is the inside and this is nothing more than giving you an idea of where your glue is going to be okay as you see this shape is slowly starting to come into play take your scratcher I like the, this because it gives me pencil control. I can go right up to the edge without having any problems uh, versus these scratchers where you really have to, you have, you have to be somewhat careful. Okay, take your contact cement, even when the leather's wet, this stuff works great. And again, remember, don't be in a hurry here. If it takes a knife maker, 20 plus hours to make a knife, it should take a couple hours to make a sheath. Two hours is a good average time frame for a sheath. Take your time, don't skip any steps, stay in the lines, enjoy what you're doing, and the final product will show. Okay, glue the inside of your sheath, glue your welt piece. And here again, this is the outside edge, will be trimmed later. We don't have to worry about the glue. Okay, let this dry. Sometimes it'll take 10, 15 minutes. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a hair dryer and I'll just run it across the glue. That takes about 15 minutes uh, of your time. And just transfer the welt to the knife sheath. Press down with your fingers very carefully. Make sure you don't use your fingernails because wet leather will copy everything. At this point, you can take any soft round tool running along the edge, the French shoe hammer, anything just to contact that glue. Now take your knife again, very carefully staying right along the edge of the sheath, 90 degree angle, cut out your welt, excess. Okay, at this point, you have the inside welt built into the sheath. This is how it's going to work, just like your pattern. When the knife comes out, it'll compress that, and that's what gives it the compression fit, and it gives it that positive lock. Um, when you pull a knife in and out of a sheath, you'll want that positive lock so that you know that you're not going to lose that $200, $300 knife. Okay, everything's working real good so far, and uh, at this particular stage, we'll want to go ahead and mark our uh, our welt line for the stitching. Remember we had put this on here earlier. Now all you want to do is take the pattern that you cut it from set it right on the initial line and then just move it in one-eighth of an inch to the outside edge just like that. Take your awl Draw your stitch mark. By moving that in an eighth of an inch, you'll know that you have the welt here and that you have the sewing line nice and firm. Take your wing dividers. Put approximately an eighth of an inch in on the outside edge. And it'll give you your line for your sewing. At this point, now you'll want to take your stitch marker. And uh, again, they have them in five, six, and seven. Number six is a very nice all around uh, stitch spacing. It makes it look very professional. Um, it's very pleasing and attractive. Uh, a number five, 
that the stitches are too big and uh, it doesn't give it that custom look. Take your stitch marker, make sure that you're inside of the outside line there, and transfer your stitch marker. Now at this point you can go a double row down here of stitches like I did here, or you can do a single row. Uh, you won't lose any strength. In this particular case we can go ahead and do a single, single row and then just run it right down the middle of the welt to the very end. I want to go ahead and transfer. Keep it straight up and down and apply firm pressure and then just sort of transition the end close to uh, the other stitch. That is uh, what our stitch marks are going to look like. And now it's time to mold the uh, sheath to the knife. And we do that again is we place it into the water, allow it to soak for approximately 5-10 seconds uh, depending on uh, the temperature of the water, the warmer the better. Again, remember not hot. And you'll want the surface to come back to its original color. The best way to do this would be at this time is to place it into a plastic sack and allow the leather to case. What that does is all the water gets in the uh, uh, inside of this hide and it'll, it'll work like modeling clay. So if you put it into a plastic bag and let it sit for maybe two, three hours and then pull it out, um, it'll work a little bit easier for you. For the purposes of time, this will suffice. Okay, now take it out of the water and good stiff leather. What you want to do is you want to start shaping it by hand. The shape and moist leather is like a modeling clay. You basically rub it with your hands, twist it, take the knife, open that up a little bit stick the knife in there. Now what you want is you want this welt right up along the edge of that uh, that knife. So go ahead and move it up to about that point right there. And you'll know that that's where you want that so you go ahead and mark the outside of your sheath right there. Keep pressing and molding on some real thick leather like this, a lot of times at the very end here, it's very difficult to, to uh, manipulate that down so that the welt is touching the leather. It's at that time um, that you can take your gouging tool, identify the true fold of the sheath by running a pin in there, open it up, Again, remember being very careful to protect your leather from the cutting board. Take your gouge and gouge yourself a fold cut. And what that does is it'll thin out the leather there. will allow you to fold it a lot easier. And place it back on that line. Take your knife, you should be able to get a good feel of how it's going in, should be nice and snug, open it up, take a look, again remember all of this came from your paper pattern, it's working just the way it's supposed to. This is the stop, you won't allow the knife to go any further down. As the knife comes out it compresses, leather is flexible, it'll push the leather away and then give you that positive lock. Again, when you insert it, it'll push that leather away and then pop right into that locking hold. Once you have it to where you want it, get your bulldog clamps. And again, remember anything that touches leather, and again, where you had it, 
And if you need a little bit uh, more help in the folding part, you can you can give yourself a little bit of break by cutting that leather. That'll help you fold it also. Um, once you have all that down, take your bulldog clamps and set that to dry. And that needs to really dry for a, a, a full 12 hours. There's not too much more you can do with it at that point. Once, uh, once the leather dries, and if you'll notice, for comparison reasons, I changed the shape of the top just so that you can see. Once this item is dry, you can go to the very next stage, and that would be to drill out your stitch holes. The first thing that you'll want to do is, uh, I do want to show you that this is the pattern for the back belt loop, and I have provided this uh, pattern that I use uh, for, uh, for my belt loops with, with the video. And what it does is it, it allows it the nice, smooth, flowing back uh, belt carrier versus just a straight piece of leather that is pretty much the standard. And again, things like this separate the custom from the manufactured sheath. Okay, now what you want to do is give yourself a little bit of working room here. Get your Dremel drill press. And now this can here is rubber cement. Now before you do anything on the back, with the sheath dry, take your rubber cement. It's not necessary to rough anything up because this is just going to be a temporary hold. Go ahead and put your glue on the inside welt. And that's the outside marking of your sheath. Go in 3 eighths of an inch. Again, rubber cement, similar to contact cement, requires edges to be somewhat dry. Take it, bar these clamps here. And then allow that to set maybe 10, 15 minutes. For the purpose of the video, we won't need that much time. And then every once in a while, if you need to, you can take the knife and just put it in, make sure that it is going in the way it's supposed to, and that's a real nice fit there. And then once that's sewn up, that'll be just a real solid, solid fit. Okay, that's pretty well holding now. Now what you do is you take your Dremel drill press, and I use a 1 16th inch drill bit. Um, that is the same size as the harness needles that I use. And it's very important that your leather be dry when you, when you drill out the holes, because if you drill wet leather like this, um, what it does is it burns the leather, it causes it to collect on the uh, drill bit, make it fatter than it actually is, and you'll get larger holes. Now I'm gonna talk through this drilling process um, and again, it's nothing more than placing the knife sheath on your drill pad. And once you get the hang of this, it goes fairly quick. A little more power there. you already have there. Okay, and you do this all the way around the knife sheath. Clean off any of the excess here. And what that does is it gives you a very, very nice 
um, stitch mark all the way around the sheath. Now that we have all the holes drilled into our, our knife sheath, and they're straight and even all the way in the back, you can go ahead and open it up. Remember, this is a uh, rubber cement, allows you to do that. And then all the, the, the trailings or the cuttings from that, you just wipe off. And if need be, you can take a pocket knife or something and just sort of scratch those back smooth. But anyway, that's how you get the stitch marks or the stitch holes evenly on the front and the back of the, of the knife sheath when you're hand sewing. Now, what we'll want to do is we'll go, go ahead and make the belt hanger with the pattern that I provided for you already. Go ahead and transfer that to your leather. Cut it out as I've shown you. Go ahead and do all your edging and burnishing techniques. And when you dye your edges, this is where this uh, item comes in real handy. And this allows you to stay on the edge without transferring it to the leather itself. To uh, transfer your name, tape, name stamp or any other initials, decorative touches that you might have, um, get that bottle, that hairspray bottle with a fine mist, and then just wet your belt hanger both sides, nice and even, and then allow that leather to come back almost to the natural color. It'd probably take about five minutes or so for that water to. Uh, um, soak in there. Get yourself an anvil, a steel plate, or anything else, and when that leather is correct, remember this is the part that folds back on the belt hanger. And you want to mark about right there, and that's where you take your name stamp, and you can get this at the leather factory, fairly reasonable. Place it on your leather. And the key to this so that it doesn't bounce is that your surface, your uh, working surface, is very solid. Strike that tool, it'll leave a real nice impression, and uh, you're ready to go on and put it onto your knife sheath. Now, a good rule of thumb for the belt hanger is that the top of the belt hanger should be um, approximately centered on the knife handle. So as, hear that pop there, as you see here, the top of the belt hanger is approximately center of the knife. That'll allow for a, for a very comfortable carry. And um, that is part of the function principle. The fit being the belt that you put in here fits the belt hanger. Uh, the, the sheath fits the knife. And this is part of the function. Uh, as far as that principle is concerned. Okay, go ahead and open that up. You already know where your holes are. Remember that this is the back. Take your completed hanger, take your wing dividers, and your stitch marker, and go ahead and identify your holes. Drill them out on the Dremel, top and bottom. Now, there's one thing that you'll have to do and this is where your scythe comes into play that I mentioned earlier is where this is connected to the sheath needs to be tapered ever so slightly so that it comes to a nice smooth uh, thin point so that way when the belt is inserted um, it won't catch on the real thick part right here and the way you do that is is you moisten the very tip only, allow it to saturate, the wetter the better, and that would be the tip only. Take your scythe, which uses injector style blades, and then just run it along the edge, and what that does is it shaves a very thin layer of your leather. You want to take it so that it's the very tip is feathered which means it's very, very thin, allowing the rest of this to maintain the strength of the hide. Now you have that. That way, when it's sewn to the back piece, it'll be nice and smooth. All right. I went ahead and did that on this one. This one's all set. What you want to do now is you want to take an awl, open up your back hanger, 
And first of all, just place it onto the back of the sheath, fold this part down. What you want is that the turn of this belt hanger is configured with the stitch holes there, so it's a nice smooth, as you can see here, a nice smooth uh, where they meet up. Okay, and then sort of manipulate that a little bit with your hand, get a general idea of where it needs to be, and that looks like it'll work right there. Hang on to that with your other finger, open that up, make sure that you have plenty of leather under there, and remember when that's sewed down, that has to be right there. And you take that and just transfer a few of the holes with your awl to the leather. That'll give you right here where you need to sew and glue. Now, um, the very first thing that we'll want to do is go back to the, to the gluing stages and take your wrapping tool. Rough it up. Remember which is the back part so that you're not scraping up. Go ahead and give it a little something to bond to. Okay, stay right at the points that you made with the stitch holes because you still have a good eighth of an inch on the outside of that. You don't want glue showing on your final product. Take that to your speed dry. This is really a time saver here. Contact cements have a tendency to dry 10, 15 minutes. All right, now it's very important that the holes that you marked are the ones that you put them back on. The very top one and the very bottom one are the ones that I usually use as a guide. So I move over and I make sure that the top hole and the bottom hole are right where I marked them. Take your contact hammer, hammer that down a little bit, and then when you, when you fold that over, as you can see, it's exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, to stitch that on, what you'll want to do is go ahead and get your Dremel. We're going to show you this whole stitching process here. So make mental notes because after this, every stitching operation is exactly the same. And the very first thing we'll do, obviously, is go ahead and Okay, and as you see here, you've transferred the stitch holes to the inside of the sheath. Okay, one very important thing here, and all these little tips, tricks, and techniques here are designed for uh, professional leather work. If I were just to sew that, the stitching would be on top of the surface, would after a while fray from the constant drawing and resheathing of the knife. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to recess the stitches in there. And with that, we'll use a couple of different things. We can either use the manufactured item, which is a stitching groover. And you'll want to moisten this just a little bit. Give it a little bit of moistness. Always helps. Take your stitching groover, put it right on the holes. 
and then just cut yourself a little tiny groove. What that does is it gives you a channel to sew. And you can do the same on this. Or I've taken a carving tool, a leather carving tool, and trans and reground the blade. And then you just sort of follow, gives you a little more control. Cuts you out a little groove. Transfer that. Okay, now that you have that ready, that's ready to be sewn. You take your sewing thread of your choice. Again, mine is that 50-pound braided micron. Um, there's, a, there's a science in itself as to determine how much thread you use for a sewing product. Uh, for an item, say, two and a half inches worth of thread, I would use something to, uh, to the extent of maybe 24 inches um, after a while, you'll sort of develop your own game plan, as long as you make sure that you have enough thread to sew the entire product. After you do two or three of them, you'll get an idea of how much thread you need. Okay, take your thread, get you some beeswax, and coat thread completely with the beeswax. Now, the way to make a saddle stitch is one thread and two needles. Take your thread. Insert it through the eye. I'm going to give myself a little sharper point there. Okay, insert it through there. Approximately an inch through. Bring the needle back down into itself, into the thread. Very carefully, just pierce the thread, not your finger. Run it through so that it looks like that. Bring this thread back to the eye. Pull your thread through, bring it through, and continue that until you pop it over the edge like that. Take it about an inch and a half from the end, and then with a twisting motion, twist it like that. Do the same on the other side, and then that's your outfit all set up for sewing uh, with what's known as the saddle stitch. The very first thing that we do is we take the project and we'll go to the second hole down. All the stress will be on the top couple holes, so you go to the second hole, push it through, bring both needles even, one on each end. Take one of your needles and you have to make sure that you have all the holes drilled out. And go ahead and bring it through that first hole. Take your other needle, go back through the first hole. And that's known as a back tack. Very carefully pull snug both of them. Now to get a little bit more recess, go ahead and wet that and wet the inside of your leather also. What that will do is it will soften the leather up and help this side to recess or you can also use your groover on this one. Now after you've finished your first back tack through your hole with one needle, take the other needle, go down through the same hole. And after a while, your fingers will get real strong, and you'll be able to do this by, uh, um, by hand. But until then, these pliers here with the tubing around them work real good. Go through the next hole, bring it around, next needle, same hole. It's basically in, in like this. And that is the saddle stitch. And in some parts of town, it's known as the step stitch. It's a very strong, very attractive stitch. It makes the front of the stitch look just like the back of the stitch, or back of the sheath. And uh, that's really important because on a good quality product, the front is just as attractive as the back. Pull that through there. Continue sewing all the way through. Now if you're handy with wood or if you know somebody that can build you a product like this, 
This is known as a stitching horse. What it is, it has jaws. You can open them up. Place the sheath in there, and then you don't have to hold it. At this point now, you just continue all the way down around the sheath. If your fingers start getting a little sore there, go ahead and make you some protective caps. That is saddle stitching. Continue all the way around the back, trim your threads, and then take a lighter and just burn, it, burn the ends of the thread. When you finish that, transfer this, glue this onto the back piece here, drill your holes, and sew that piece uh, down also using the same stitch. After you finish that, it's nothing more than completing the sheath by sewing the welt face down to the back. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get busy sewing this thing, and uh, we'll get back with you as soon as that's done. Okay, we have the belt hanger now in position. It's sewn both top and bottom. The stitches on the inside are recessed that, so that there's no contact with the knife. Now, the final thing is, is just a matter of gluing this together and getting ready to sew the final outside edge. And the way we do that is we take our contact cement and cover your holes. Again, making sure that you're neat, make sure that the glue doesn't go to the inside of the sheath. And all these little hints here are designed to make sure that you do produce a professional looking sheath. Okay, you have contact cement equal on both edges. We'll go ahead and take our hair dryer real quick. Okay, now, once the contact cement is tacky to the touch, what you'll have to do is you'll have to align the holes up so that you can sew, and the best way to do that is hold the knife sheath up to a light. Make sure that you have all the holes lined up so you can see daylight through all the holes. Squeeze the sheath together. Take your bulldog clamps. Set them on the edge of the sheath like this. Double check, make sure there's daylight coming through the holes. Set that aside for a few minutes. Then go ahead and get your sewing thread ready. And um, a piece like that probably will take about five, six feet worth of sewing thread. And if you do it by hand, uh, it'll probably take you about 30, 40 minutes worth of sewing. Once you do have it completely sewn, it'll look just like this. Again, remember the front and the back just as neat. Now, we have this excess piece of leather that was left here from all the operations. We'll have to get rid of that. And again, use your uh, utility knife or a pocket knife, being very careful that you stay 90 degrees to the edge of the sheath. You want to just go ahead and trim that off. Keep that knife perpendicular so that you're not cutting at an angle. Take your time and always be careful when you're cutting towards you. Trim off any excess. This is now the edge. And what you want to do is you'll want to take it to your grinding wheel that's mounted either on a drill or washing machine motor like this and grind this edge flush. I'll go ahead and use this Dremel here. It's also very important that you make sure that the sanding wheel is also flush with the surface so that you don't get any uh, crooked grinds. Now what you'll want to do, now that that's flush, if the front face here needs to be cleaned up a little bit, you can take the head knife 
lay it on your cutting board and just trim that off so that it's, it's a nice smooth point. Take your number two edger, remember you used the number one earlier, this one's a little bit wider in the teeth. Take that sharp edge off that you just made with the grinding step, take it all the way to the tip, turn it over, and again be careful where, how hard you press down on it. The sheath at this point should be completely dry though. Take it very carefully around the stitches so that you don't cut into any of the stitches. And now you have your edge ready for final finishing. Um, at this point, to make the edge nice and slick, they have a product on the market which was uh, fairly hard to get a hold of years ago. It's, it's um, pretty common now. It's called gum tragacan. It's uh, some type of a chemical product that uh, you paint on your edge and then you slick it up. I still like um, glycerin liquid saddle soap. What I do is I'll take a dauber and I'll just load up my dauber with 100% saddle soap here. And I'll take it and I'll paint the edges, even the top here. And I'll get it nice and moist, just the edges. Then you take your rub rag, which is again burlap or denim, and while it's all still nice and wet, go ahead and start rubbing it. Give you something to rub up against. And the longer and the harder you do this, the slicker that edge will get, and it'll look like glass after a while. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just walk around the shop thinking about other things I have to do while I'm rubbing this. And sometimes I'll get carried away and go 20 minutes, but then that edge becomes so smooth and slick, I'll realize why I took the time to do it that way. Um, but anyway, work on it like that. And then that's your final edge material. And uh, as you can see, what I did in this step here is when this is completely dried, I went ahead and dyed it using this in this manner. And the nice thing about this felt uh, edge painter is that it won't leak onto the front of your sheath. After that dries, polish it a little bit with a little paste wax and your edge is perfect. Now, what I do here for the final step of the knife sheath is at this point I, I'll either dye it and with that I'll take the uh, Feebing's uh, oil tan, saddle tan or light brown, and I'll just dip it into the dye and then using circular motion, take it all the way around the sheath. Wear rubber gloves, have plenty of ventilation, and then just do circular motion like this all the way around the sheath. Let it dry, not uh, with any type of a heat source or anything, and then in two, three hours it'll be dry enough, take a polishing uh, brush, clean it off, put a little uh, finishing wax on there, and then what uh, made it this color was my olive oil. When it's all completely dry, I'll take olive oil, and I keep mine in a crock pot, and warm it up just a little bit, take a piece of sheepskin, shearling, and then just go ahead and put it all over the sheath. It'll look blotchy at first, but then it'll dry to a nice hue like this. If you want to, at this particular stage, when you're completely done, is take that Reese's Texas Leather Polish, give it one smooth temporary coat, and then you're done. Now, here you go. You have your final pouch sheath. Should be nice and snug. Hold the knife upside down. It shouldn't fall out whatsoever. If you did, you better start over. And uh, everything is ready to put on your belt and take out in the field and be proud to wear something like this. All right, let's jump right into project number two, and that'll be the full scabbard sheath. This is the final product here that we're gonna be building. And uh, basically, this is for a large double-hilted scabbard fixed-bladed knife, such as this Marine K-Bar. Certain variations of this particular style that can be modified to include 
the front sharpening steel pouch, which I'll show you real quick how to put that together also. And the sharpening steel slot on the side of the knife sheath. These are all compatible with the scabbard style sheaths. All of them pretty typically use the wraparound strap. Uh, these are necessary to, uh, to make sure that the knife stays in there. A lot of people don't really care for them, but they are an absolutely secure method of, uh, of putting, holding your knives together. There is also an angle strap, also in a scabbard style sheath where this strap comes over the side. That's also an option with these knives. All right, well, the very first thing that we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take our pattern from the original pattern making session and we're going to go ahead and transfer that to our leather and this is what you're going to have cut out from now when you measured this piece here which is the body of the sheath you're also going to need the back portion of it and what you measured out was two and a half inches go ahead and get you a piece of leather a large piece I'm going to do it small here for demonstration purposes Make sure that one end is completely a straight line. Cut it out. Take a strap cutter and adjust it to two and a half inches and then cut you a strap out for this particular one here. For demonstration purposes, show you how it works. Basically take the straight edge of the leather against that strap cutter, place it in there, and then just pull and that'll cut your straps out. It cuts your straps out for the back piece, and it also cuts out your straps for the snap cover. All right. This particular sheath employs two decorative touches that we're gonna use, and the first one is the basket weave. The basket weave is designed as a, as a very uh, geometric pattern. It's very pleasing. It hides scratch marks, um, and it just takes it one step above plane. Um, also, we're going to place a centavo, Mexican Spanish coin, on the cap to give it a little touch of class. Cap uh, caps, the 24-line snaps that we're going to be using are pretty plain, and dressing them up with the coins are really a nice touch. Okay, let's go ahead back to the basics here. There are certain pieces that we're going to need for, uh, for our scabbard. And the first one, obviously, is the face. The second one will be the back piece. We'll need the welt for the front. And then we'll need a little square piece like this. And what this is for is to give it a little bit of a, of a body. When you put the knife in, it'll give it a shelf to sit on, and it makes it uh, very nice. So those are the pieces that we're going to need, and the way that you start is by basket weaving. Two tools that you're going to have to pick up at Tandy Leather or Leather Factory or any other leather manufacturer of your choice is a basket weave stamp. This one happens to be the model X511 and a camouflage tool, which this one happens to be your C940. These are the two tools that you'll need. Go ahead and get your water bottle. Again, anytime you put impressions into leather, it has to be moist. Go ahead and wet it nice and even. A little bit on the back too. Let that sit for just a few minutes while you're getting your wing dividers. And I might also add here, if, um, if you have a real large section to basket weave, you can even rubber cement this to a piece of uh, exposed x-ray film or a piece of cardboard, and that will prevent it from stretching out of, out of shape. Okay, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give ourselves um, an outline of the actual decoratives part. Now remember the wealth in this this particular project is three-eighths of an inch. So we'll go and we'll take three-eighths of an inch 
just kind of give us an idea, that's where three eighths of an inch is. Our stitch mark is going to split that right down the middle. That's where our stitch line is going to be. So we'll use this three eighths of an inch as our border. Take your wing dividers and in the moist leather, give yourself your pattern area. And basically close off a window in there. Okay, very next step is take your face, take a ruler and at an angle, this is not a pen, scratcher, give yourself a line all the way across the face of the, the sheet. What that is, is that'll give you your guideline for your repetition stamp. Now, a piece of marble or a piece of steel or anything at all that'll give some resistance is what you use now. The leather is just about ready. It needs to come back a little bit more to the color, but for the purpose of this video, uh, it'll work. Again, just let it come back a little bit more to the normal color. Take your, your tool, set it right in the middle of your project, set it right on the line, these two ends here, and give yourself a stamp. Take the tool, now you can either turn it over, place the tool on the other side of that mark, make sure the lines are aligned, stamp. Turn it over and basically like that. Stamp. Turn it over. Connect your two lines like that. Make sure you're on the line. Stamp. Now I'm going to pick up the pace here just a little bit. The nice thing about video is you can always play it at slow speed and see what's going on. And give yourself your spacing. Turn it over. Now as you're coming up to the edge of your project, there are certain techniques that you'll have to do so that you don't uh, go over the line. I'll show you that here as I get to it. pattern. Okay, now here, if I put the tool full face there, it would cross the line and we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to stay back of that line approximately a sixteenth of an inch, or better yet, an eighteenth of an inch, or I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch. Tow your tool down, tap it lightly so that all you get is the bottom portion of the tool. The top portion stays within that line. And we'll go over here. And once you get this uh, repetition going here, it's actually pretty quick. The, the first baseline, remember, tow your tool in, slight tap just to get the bottom portion. Now, once you got your baseline, then it's just a matter of connecting the lines. Remember, watch your line, and now connect your lines. I think you can probably already see the pattern developing. And so on and so forth. You can see the basket weave pattern coming out real nice there. Okay, now what you'll want to do is you want to go ahead and fill this out, take it all the way to the edge, all the way around the, the uh, prod project. Then you take your camouflage tool and I'll do it right here for so that you can understand. Place it right on the line so that the two feet of the tool are on your guideline and stamp. And what that does is it throws the geometric pattern back into itself so it looks like it's just ever continuing. And it's basically an illusion of the eye. And 
You do that all the way around. And then that's really how the pattern develops. This camouflage tool here along the edge just sort of blends it all in together and you do it all the way across the top. Okay, now that you have that, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and edge the top face here only. And we'll do that just like we did all the, the rest of the products. Anytime you edge something, you always want to burnish it with uh, the glycerin. Take your back strap, fold it in half, or not in half, but you fold the top down. Place the face approximately where you want it. And here's, here's the nice thing about a custom sheath. Um, the top of the back of the sheath, in the middle of the knife, at the top of the knife, it doesn't really matter wherever you or uh, the person wants to carry the blade. And you can even bring it all the way all the way up to the top here, depending on where you fold it. Okay, in this particular case, we'll go right there. And then that's how that's coming about. You have a general idea of where you want it. Take your pen, give yourself a reference. So from that point on, that's where we're gonna sit. Give yourself also a reference as far as this line is concerned. Now what you want to do, you want to take that square, place it on the edge of the strap here, and this is where you get your clean, clean square edges. Everything here is relative. Bring it down there. Now, you want to leave at least an inch or an inch and a quarter from where the, the flap goes down and makes contact to where the face of the sheath rests. So give yourself a good inch. And actually that should have been figured into the fold, so we'll bring it down a little bit more. So we don't lose that much more off the top. And then square off your window very lightly give yourself some guidelines this will be the top portion use your wing dividers bring it down Okay, now we're going to basket weave this window here also. And then final pieces will look like that. When you're all done basket weaving, again, remember edge your straps and burnish them. Set those aside. Okay, now that you have the top basket weaved, you have to determine where you want your strap. And so to do that, we'll go back to the one we're building, and I'll use this plain one here to make it easier to see without any distractions. Okay, this is where your knife is going to rest. So what you want to do is you want to take some scratch, an awl or something, and then use these here or anything else on the knife that you can as reference. On the inside, you don't want to do it on the outside, but on the inside of that handle, just draw you a little line there. That is where your slots are going to be. Now you can buy these bag punches, or what you can do is you can take um, these hole cutters. And I'll show you one way here. Take the hole cutter and on each one of these straps. And again, always use this and line up so that all your holes are even. Okay, on this one here, what you do is you take uh, your two holes. Now, earlier I mentioned this chisel screwdriver. Here's a good opportunity to use it. And uh, some cuts are difficult to make. And just use this as a can opener. And bring it on down. Or you can use a knife. I'm just... Uh, 
showing this actually to show the tool. It works great around tight corners also. And this will be your slot or take a regular bag punch, place it there and strike your slot out. Okay, going back to our fixed piece here. We now have our basket weave. We now have our slots where we want them. Now what we'll have to do is we'll have to skive. Remember, wherever two leathers contact, you'll want to skive that to feather edge. So that way when it folds over and makes contact, a very smooth soft transition and it just doesn't give you that bump right there okay now that you have that you'll have to go back and you have to do a couple things you'll have to build your welt piece and the way you do that is nothing more than take your face place it on a piece of scrap welting material and it's also very important to use good quality welting material don't skimp and use your cheap scrap at the bottom of your box um, a welt is a very important function of the sheath and it has to be rigid. It provides rigidity to the sheath and protects the sh stitches from being cut by the knife. All right, nothing more than taking the outline of your, of your face. Go three-eighths of an inch on the inside. Follow the line. Then what you do is you cut it out. Watch your hand when you use these head knives. But anyway, you cut out your welt, both sides. Take this plug out, you can throw that away, that's scrap after that. And then go ahead and glue it to the front face just like you did the other one. This is your welt. Remember the inside of the welt needs to be finished just like everything else. One additional thing that we'll do on this scabbard style sheath is we'll add this back shelf piece. And with that, it's nothing more than just a piece of plug leather. Once you have your welt on there, glue it to the back. Like this. And that'll give you your shelf. Remember, feather edge, this also so that when it does contact the back face, it's all very smooth in transition. Okay, now, we're up to this part here. This piece is, is put on there. Again, all that does is it provides a shelf for the knife as it's resting on the, on the back piece. At this stage, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put in your stitch marks. Remember, 3 eighths of an inch split that exactly, run your line all the way around, take your groover, now they have a special groover that makes it real nice whenever you groove an edge. You just put this piece there and you follow that edge all the way around and that'll give you a groove. When this is completely dry, it's still raw leather and at this stage you can go ahead and take your dauber and dye it let it uh, dry for a good eight, ten hours, and then go ahead and get back to it. This here has been dyed with uh, saddle tan. It's an oil dye, a very attractive color. The edges have been smoothed with the glycerin. All the top edges here have been smoothed. Now it's a matter of putting on this, the strap. And the way we do that is we have our strap cut. And I usually start with about a six, seven inch piece. You don't need anything that big, but uh, it, it's good for starting. And uh, another little trick of the trade here, which comes in real handy, is get yourself a 9 16th wood boring bit, punch your hole, and it should be a number four hole, into the end of your strap. You can either come to a point or nice and rounded. They have tools that will cut that, or you can put a nickel on the end of that and trace around it to give it a nice effect. Turn it over onto the flesh side. Bring this to your drill press, put it in there, and then 
bore yourself a little recess in there. Take your 24 line snap, this will fit into there, and when you push it into there, it's below the top surface of the leather. To set it, you take your, your stud and the socket there, and you get your tool, which are, in this particular case, I'll come over here for some more support. Put that together. Grab your hammer, and then set it into that. Now what you want to do is take yourself a half inch bag punch and a one ounce piece of uh, leather. This is garment leather. Punch you out a one inch, one half inch size slot or a disc like this. Take contact cement, glue that onto there. Any contact now that that has with a knife will not harm it. Okay? So, that's that. Now you take this strap and you weave it into the knife scabbard. Being aware which side of the hip the person will be wearing this. If he's right-handed and he's going to wear it on his right hip, you don't want the round part to, um, to uh, be facing the front because if he goes through shrub, the shrubbery could catch that and open up the sheath. So you want to go ahead and, this would be good for a left-handed user, so you want to go ahead and put it like this. Okay. While this is all still unglued and unfolded, you're doing all these steps here, and these are fitting steps. Take your knife, put it in, take this, manipulate it a little bit so that it's in the center of the knife handle. And there's no science to any of this, you have to manhandle it sometimes. Put that directly in the center of the handle, and then wrap that around. Press, and what that'll do is it'll give you, on the other side, an indentation of where the snap cap goes. Pop your hole in, take it to the drill press, recess it just slightly, now what you want to do is you want to finish off this square edge, and you can do that with this punch, or again, take a coin that fits this uh, strap and cut around it. Give yourself about three quarters of an inch to an inch away from the snap, and go ahead and finish off with your 24 line snap. And this stud here socket. Set it on the finishing or on the setting tool. Hammer it in place. And one final time. Go ahead and put that in there. Center that a little bit where you want it. Make sure that's exactly where it's going to be. And then take it out, but don't move it. Okay, at this point, take your hole punch. Bring it to about a number one or a number two hole. And right in the center of that strap, pop you a hole. And I use copper rivets. Copper soft it won't irritate the knife. And again, if you want to, you can take a quarter inch uh, tool there and recess your little hole. Go ahead and set this onto your steel plate. Copper rivets have been around since before the Civil War, and they're still used I, exactly today. 
as they were in those days, which means that somebody did something right. Cut off the end of the rivet, take a ball peen type hammer, and flatten it, run your finger across it to make sure that there's no copper rivet exposed. Put that on there. Yeah, we're just about there. Coming along very, very quick. Okay, um, take, excuse me. Take your contact cement. Give yourself a reference line here. Here in the sky area, go ahead and fill that up with some contact cement. There's the bottom of the line, so you want to go above that. At this stage, always double check everything before you do anything. Because if you were to go below the line a little bit, it's not that drastic at this particular part, but um, a lot of time that you've spent on this product. Okay. Now, we have that all set. hammer here. Make your contact. Take your face so that all of this excess sky dairy is, is hidden. Place it on there. Glue it. And while the glue is setting, take your dog clamps. let it set. From this stage here, what we'll want to do obviously is we'll want to go ahead and drill out your holes. If you want to do it uh, the old-fashioned way, uh, Tandy Leather and Al Stolman have a great book on the market. It's called How to Sew Leather. And uh, using the old, old method, you can uh, sew it together. Anyway, finish the final stitching. And if you'll notice what I did on this one here is I took the regular thread that I mentioned earlier and I went ahead and dyed it the same color, the saddle tan, as, as I did the sheath. Uh, this has been oiled from this color, and this is the color difference you'll achieve. So if that's attractive to you, you can leave it. If not, I, I like a little bit darker of a stain. So anyway, dye your thread, and then sew it, and it'll match the same color of your sheath. When that is all complete, and it's sewn and you've trimmed away the edges and you've ground it and you've edged it and you've burnished it. What you want to do is go ahead and put your knife back in the sheath. You have your snap cover here. And I use the same tool that I used um, uh, earlier and that was the, uh, the um, scratcher. But you can take any kind of a metal device, scratch up the face of your 24 line cap. Now what I do is I take the centavos. I have this little doming tool. You can uh, buy it at the craft stores. Um, uh, there's one here in town that has them available. If you can't find one, let me know and I'll help you out. But all it is is a lathed out steel drum with a huge ball bearing. You place your coin into that and then with a hammer you strike it and it comes out domed. Take you some of this uh, adhesive weld, any type on the market, industrial strength is great. Scratch up the inside of the coin, mix this per its instructions, dab a little here, dab a little there, set that, and on the Spanish coins, the Spanish eagle is, is very attractive with the centavo and the Spanish writing. Set, her, set it on there. and. Again, take a bulldog clamp or any type of clamp and let that cure for at least 24 hours. Um, the stress that, uh, that these snaps have are minimal um, and it'll last forever. I've never had one fall off of there. That, the glue is just wonderful. But anyway, after you're all through with that, what I do is I take olive oil and I'll coat it with that. And again, a final finish of uh, paste wax 
I prefer snow seal to sheaths that are used in the outdoors. And there you have it. Absolutely wonderful companion to this particular knife and very attractive and now you know how to do it. All right, one uh, final tidbit here that makes it real nice uh, that you can provide your customer are these accessory sharpening steel. This one here is sewn directly onto the knife. These here are attached into the welt as these sharpening steels and uh, very easy to make. I'm going to take a few minutes here and just really quickly show you how you can make them for your own customers. Easiest way to do it, take your sharpening steel, take your piece about two and a half by about three and a half inches. This is about uh, six ounce leather, five, six ounce leather. Saturate it in water, case it, take your small block of wood, place this over it, form it real quick with your fingers to get the basic shape. pieces of wood, push it up, hammer it, take another piece on the other side, hammer it into place, set it off, forget about it. Eight hours later, Take it off, it's dry like this. This is the one we'll be doing here real quick. Uh, take your another little strap here, set your uh, snap post on there, and then glue it onto the uh, piece like that. Take your wing dividers, cut it off to about a quarter of an inch, like this. Cut your back strap with a nice tip. You'll put a snap cap on there. Snap that onto there. Before the face of the sheath is sewn, while it's still in this particular position, this is when you sew that on there. And there you have it. Put a few decorative initials there, a nice decorative snap cover, and you have that one. The one on the side is even easier. Take the same size piece of leather. Now these are the ones that go on the sides of the sheaths. And they replace the welt in that section. And all you do is take the same piece of wet leather. Take that. Rub it around real good. Take you a handy bulldog clamp. Push it together. Set that aside. The next day. It's done. It looks like that. Trim this to the same thickness of your welt. And then it goes in there. Nice little touch. No trouble at all. <laughs> There are many more trade secrets in sheath making I have to show you, so to be included on my mailing list for future volumes, stay tuned for the information that follows. Feel free to call on me for any questions you might have, and we'll see you again soon.